as you know, our, our vision at HCS is that Hollywood Christian School will become a catalyst for world-class kingdom-centered education. And one thing that kingdom spells out whenever you apply it on a day-to-day -day basis is really and truly leadership. Uh, the word kingdom itself has the two words king and domain, which is a person ruling over a specific territory or a specific domain. And the way you have dominion on the earth as God assigned to us is through leadership. That's how we exercise our spiritual gifts. Now, when we think of leadership, a lot of times we think about the person that's in charge or the person that's out in front. Uh, but that's not necessarily true. The, the leader is the one who is influencing others through the gifts that they have. So it's not always just the person who is in administration or the person who is calling all the shots that's actually in leadership. It is the person who is adequately using their gifts that they have to influence others in whatever position that they hold. Leadership is not based on position. It's based on effectiveness and influence. So it kind of flows into where we're going in today's lesson. And I don't have but 10 minutes left, and it's impossible for me to teach everything I have in 10 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to do what I can, but we're probably going to have to finish this again next week as well because I don't want to... I would rather take my time and teach what I can than to try to fit it all in just 10 minutes, so we will see. All right, so last week we started looking at how do we apply the principles of the kingdom of God? How does this stuff pan out on a day-to-day -day basis? Because it doesn't do us any good to just know principles, to know verses, and to know all these things about the kingdom if we don't know what it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. And so we've been discovering how do we apply this. And we left off last week with this particular statement. We said, living life in the kingdom is simply living a life of priority. We defined the kingdom and we talked about what the kingdom is. We showed the biblical basis for the kingdom of God, uh, both through Old Testament scripture, New Testament scripture, through the ministry and the life of Jesus Christ, we see the kingdom being elevated. Um, but in order to really apply the principles of the kingdom, you have to live a life of priority. You have to live a life where you put first thing first. Uh, for example, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. There's a lot of things that are going to vie for your attention in this world, whether it be things, whether it be people, whether it be circumstances, but Jesus made life very simple. He only gave us two things to focus on. He said focus first on the kingdom, then focus on making sure that you have a right relationship with the king. You do those two things and everything else will fall into place. But even though it's simple, it's not always easy because not everything that's simple is easy. There's a process to it. There's a way that we have to prepare ourselves so that we can be effective in the kingdom of God. So picking up where we left off last week, um, here's a, a synopsis of how kingdoms work. And, and this, is, this is kind of an oversimplification, which can always be kind of dangerous if you don't know all the details that are in it. But here's what happens. The way a kingdom in general works is that you have a particular kingdom that acquires a new territory. So that kingdom wants to establish a new territory. And what will happen is when that new territory is acquired, that government will then send what we call a governor to rule over that particular territory and to communicate the heart and the mind, the will and the intentions of the king. And what he'll do is that governor will communicate with a senate. And that senate will then communicate with the citizens. And when everybody follows what the king has said, the governor, the senate, the citizens, then that new territory begins to reflect the old territory. Now, that word uh, senate is actually a form of government itself. When Jesus said, seek first the kingdom, he was talking to people who understood what a kingdom was. When he made the statement that upon this rock I will build my church, they knew what he meant when he said church. He wasn't just talking about a place where people go and they sing songs and they pray and they do all kind of happy stuff. But when they heard the word church, they would, they would interpret the word church to mean actually a senate, which is a governing body. It was actually a senate, a, a group of rulers who are responsible for helping the governor rule in that new territory. So the governor would come to the Senate, the church, with specific orders from the king himself. And that Senate would then be responsible for going out into the parts of the territory that was assigned to them and making sure that the people in that territory knew what the king desired. Now let's put that in today's language. That king, of course, is God. 
that governor that's sent into the new territory is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit lives and resides inside of us. And it tells us what is on the heart and the mind and what is the will of the king. It informs us of the commandments of the king. We then, working together, form the body of Christ, which is the church or the senate. And we are responsible, as Paul said, over our spheres of influence, our areas of influence, which are usually marked by the gifts, the talents, and the abilities that you have. You're then responsible for administering what the king has placed in your heart and your mind through the governor over your sphere of influence. None of us are assigned to rule over the whole entire world, but God has placed something inside of all of us to allow us to be able to administer his kingdom throughout the earth. The personal leadership class just got up and they hit it dead on. All those gifts that God put inside of you, none of them are for you. If you look at that list of gifts, none of them are designed for the person that has it. But every single last one of those gifts are designed for others. It's designed to serve others. It's designed to encourage others. It's designed to edify others. So your whole task is to uncover those gifts that God has placed inside of you, to develop those gifts to their fullest potential, and then carry those gifts in the earth. Do you remember what people call the Great Commission? It's at the end of the Gospel of Matthew where, where Jesus said, go into all the world, teaching, preaching, baptizing in the name of the Father and in the Son and the Holy Spirit. You all remember that? Well, that word world that Jesus used there was a word that does not refer necessarily to physical earth, but that word world actually refers to systems of order. So when Jesus was saying go into all the world, he wasn't necessarily going to all the whole entire physical earth. He was saying, no, go into the systems of order and influence them with what I have taught you. Now, last week we discovered what did Jesus always teach on every single place he went. He always taught on the kingdom. So Jesus was saying, go into these systems of the world and influence them with the principles of the kingdom of God. That was their task, and that's what they were supposed to accomplish. So what Jesus is saying to us Go into these systems of order. Go into the media industry. Go into the religious industry. Go into the entertainment industry. Go into the medical field. Go into the educational field. He's saying go into all these different industries and impact them with the kingdom. He didn't say just go to the church. He didn't say just go to the place of worship and influence it with your kingdom. No, he said go into all these systems. See, we need godly attorneys. We need godly judges. We need godly presidents. We need godly leaders to function in, in, the, in the kingdom of God here on this earth so that we can influence with the kingdom of God. Stop thinking that the only way you can serve God is in the church. No. You can serve God washing dishes at McDonald's. The Bible says do all things for the glory of God. Now, I don't want you going and just serving dishes, washing dishes at McDonald's. But my point is this. Stop thinking that there's some secular and sacred split in this world where some things count and some things don't. No, everything the Bible says you do for the glory of God. And that's how you impact the earth with the kingdom of God. So what happens with a kingdom is that that king acquires new territory. He sends his governor, the Holy Spirit, into that territory to communicate to the people what is his desire, what is his will, what is his intention, what is his purpose. That is communicated to the Senate slash the church. That church then is responsible for taking whatever territory has been assigned to it, its spheres of influence, and influence in that area with what the king has communicated to them through the governor. This is why you have to learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit in your life. Because without that understanding of who God is and what God desires, it is impossible for you to apply the kingdom of God. It's impossible for me to teach you everything you need to know concerning the kingdom. But you've got to have a relationship with him that allows you to be able to recognize his voice and to accomplish his will and to accomplish his plan in all that you do. Amen? All right. So let's look at the priority then of, of purpose because purpose is important. There are three things that make up who you are. Your purpose, your function, and your environment. All of us have the exact same purpose. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his rights and everything bad. And all of us had the same purpose. We're all here to influence the earth with the kingdom of God. Purpose is easy. 
I just saved you a lifetime of reading. You don't even need to read books on purpose anymore. Purpose is easy. We're all here for the same exact purpose. What we differ at, the Bible tells in the book of Romans, is in how we function. The Bible says we all have gifts that are different. We all have gifts that are differing. So we have the same purpose, but we function differently in order to fulfill that purpose. So not everybody will fulfill that purpose the same way. It's going to depend on the function that God has placed inside of you through your gifts, your talents, and your ability. But what makes those things come out is the environment in which you reside. One of my favorite examples, and most of you who've been have heard me use it before, one of my favorite examples is a sunflower seed. You take a sunflower seed and you sit it on a, on a kitchen table, it's going to forever look like a sunflower seed. But if you take that same sunflower seed and you put it in the ground, you water it, you nurture it, you keep it, and you're consistent, it turns into a sunflower. Now, if you think about that, a sunflower doesn't look anything like a sunflower seed, does it? They have no resemblance at all. The Bible says that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. You have no idea what you will become when you stay in the right environment and allow God to work out the things that are in you that he's designed for you even from the beginning of the world. Here's a funny thing about that sunflower seed. Even though you put it in the ground, you watered it, you nurtured it, you, could, you took care of it, there was nothing that you ever added to the seed. You never added anything to the seed itself. You only changed the environment that it was in. Never added anything to the seed. You are the same way. Everything that God wants you to become is already in you. The Bible says that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And that's the funny thing. It's already there. The thing that you need to accomplish God's will and God's plan in your life is already in you. It's already there. What's lacking is the right environment in order for that thing to become what God has designed for it to become. Your environment is made up of your culture. Your environment is made up of your principles that you operate from. Your environment is made up of your mindset. Your environment is made up of your friends. Your environment is, is made up of all the things that happen to you or that you allow to happen to you. So if you can work on your environment, you can become things that your eyes have not even imagined at this point of your life. So you, we all have the same purpose. We all function differently. But in order for those functions to work properly, we have to be in the right environment. Are y'all with me? So let me say this final point, and I'll be done for the day, and we'll finish up next week. So here's what happens. When you have the right purpose in life, you, get, you understand the right purpose, and you're following the right purpose in your life, you're fulfilling the right plan, that purpose will produce a conviction in you. And we talked about conviction before. It's this internalized belief that changes the mind, the will, and the intellect of a person. So that purpose will produce a conviction inside of you that says, I've got to accomplish this thing that God has placed in my heart. It nags at you. It pulls at you. It never leaves you alone. Because it's, it's this something inside of you that's been placed there by God that says, you've really got to do this. Even when you hear people say you can't, even when you hear people say it's not possible, there's something inside of you that says, I've got to do this anyhow. That's a conviction. You're operating for something that you can't put your hands on, but it's motivating you to fulfill purpose in your life. That conviction will produce a passion. Passion is that eagerness inside of you that's just contagious to other people. People can feel your passion before they feel anything else. When you're passionate about something, almost every time you open your mouth, that's what comes out. Because you're passionate about it. You love it. It moves you. It motivates you. It sustains you. That passion then, because it's so contagious to others, will, will produce inspiration. You'll begin to inspire others. They may not do what you do, but you will inspire them to get motivated. You will inspire them to discover who they are. You will inspire them to accomplish their goals, their dreams. You will inspire them to let go of things that they think they've got to hold on to. You will inspire them and move them to accomplish what God has set out for their own lives. That passion will produce inspiration. That inspiration, once you inspire people, you can influence them. And influence is leadership. 
Until you can influence people effectively, you cannot lead them. And that is what the kingdom is really about. It's about exercising authority and leadership on the earth. I'm out of time. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much just for this opportunity. Any amount of time we have to explore and understand and comprehend your kingdom better, that we might fulfill it with what pleases you and in a way that's in accordance to your plan and your purpose. Father, I pray that your word will remain richly in our hearts, that your teachers follow, how to follow your commands, your orders, your decrees, because they are beautiful and they guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Let your name be praised. Let your name be glorified and honored. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we ask it. Amen. Amen.